Ladies and gentlemen, how you doing? Hey, good morning. Dobro jutro, it's Serbian. And I uh, just wanted to talk to you today about a couple different things, actually. Oh, I just woke up, so I'm not my, uh, not my normal, perky, wonderful self. Uh, it takes me a minute to wake up. I just had some coffee. Just made me some wonderful domaču kafa, which means homemade coffee in Serbia. I'll show you in a second how I made it and how they make it here in Serbia. Um, let's talk, first of all, some really awesome thing just happened to me. I'm very, very proud of you. You can see I'm wearing my Zombies Club. This is a Serbian lacrosse club. And I'm a member of the Serbian Lacrosse Federation. Just met with two awesome, awesome, awesome young men, Mladen and Ivan, who uh, are members of the Serbian Lacrosse Club, who finished third place in the last tournament we just had. And, I, you know, really, really cool situation. Facebook is amazing, you know? I, I complain a lot about having 5,000 friends and 4,000 followers on there because it gets so hard to stay in touch with my old friends, my close friends, and things like that. But it serves a lot of good in this world. I posted something about meeting with these guys, and, and we're trying to develop and create lacrosse all over Serbia here because there's so much uh, room for growth. Uh, it's a great thing for the kids. But anyway, I told you that already. But I posted something about my little meeting and a gentleman that follows me on Facebook, a Canadian Serb, wonderful guy, he's a monster, you know, typical Serb, but he's, think of a typical Serbian man and then add like this many muscles on it, and that's him, he's a big, big guy, wonderful human being, he owns a gym in Canada, and he actually trains a number of professional athletes in Canada, and two of the people that he trains are professional lacrosse players. One of them is for the Minnesota Swarm, uh, and Mr. McIntosh, and he contacted me through Facebook and got me in touch with him. And the guy said, I would love to help my friend's homeland, is how he put it. And so I'm going to send him a, a list of information on kind of what we're looking for. We're not looking for any money, zero money. We're looking for equipment and ways to expand this sport here in Serbia. So hopefully this gentleman's going to be able to hook us up. There's another Drago, my friend in Sweden. He just sent me a message and he's trying to uh, speak with some Swedish lacrosse clubs and try to get some stuff down here for us. So exciting things, and that's something that keeps me motivated to when I see the passion that these kids, that these, I shouldn't call them kids, they're in their 20s, but I'm an old freaking man, so they're kids to me. But the passion that these guys have, they paid a lot of money out of their pocket for housing and food for these, for the Croatian team, the, the Hungarian team that came here for this tournament. So the guys don't do it for money, they don't do it for fame, they do it for just because they got darn love this sport and they want to see this thing succeed in Serbia. So show us some support on that, please. You know, it would mean a lot to me, you know. I like to help anybody that needs help. And there's still a lot of people that hate me for that, but I don't care. You know, I do what I want and I enjoy myself and I enjoy seeing someone else smile, especially a Serbian. It makes me a little bit happier to know that there's a Serbian that's a little bit happier because of an American guy like myself. So it's, it's, it's probably very rarely that an American would make a Serbian smile, but I'm happy. I'm happy that, you know, I've, I've been shown so much respect. Uh, what else could I tell you? The city of Belgrade, it's so funny, you know, and I, I walk around here in Belgrade, big city, the capital city of Serbia, for those of you who do not know that. It's got about 2.7 million people here, and it's such a small city. I, I, I love this city. The more I come here, the more I love Belgrade. I used to not like it because I didn't know it that well. Now I know Belgrade about like the back of my hand because I walk all over. I'm scared of public transportation kind of. And uh, But anyway, when I walk around here, I always see somebody. Somebody will come up to me with my Say Serbia stuff and, and speak to me. It, it feels like I'm back home in my little town of 1,600 people. You know, I probably see more people here that I know than I would back in my hometown. I mean, you know, my hometown right now is turned into Serbia. But uh, I was walking at 4.30 in the morning. I took this beautiful, young African-American lady that was living here for three months with her boyfriend here in Serbia. We did a little interview with her. You'll see later. Just an absolute doll. She loves Serbia. She thinks the world of Serbia. And she's going to move here. She wants to move here. And uh, she was telling me, you know, our, we walked her home 4.30 in the morning. And uh, her boyfriend, he didn't have our, my phone number, I guess. And she, he thought she was going to be home at 11 o'clock. So she had the keys to the apartment. So oh my God, he we got home, I got home from walking her home. I opened Facebook and he sent me all these messages. Said, oh my God, he said, where are you? Are you okay? Where where is she? You know. <laughs> so it's Milos. 
Uh, but anyway, it's kind of a funny thing, but we were walking back, me and Momchilo, my, my best buddy, and we were walking down the street 4.30 in the morning. First of all, this big city sanitation truck stops, and this lady says, Charles, Charles! And it was my friend Milica, uh, Milica Spasic from RTS uh, that did an interview with me. She was riding around with some of the workers to, just to see how their life is, and she jumped out and gave me a hug, and you know, wonderful girl. And then a few minutes later, me and my buddy were laughing, and we're like, oh my God, it's 4.30 in the morning, and somebody knew me here in Belgrade. Walked just a little bit, maybe five minutes down the road, and then here comes this other kid. He comes walking across the street. We see like, these two kids walk across the street. We're like, oh gosh, you know, kind of get over to the side. And this kid says, Charles, it's a uh, vocation from Facebook. He said uh, something, something funny stuff. He said, you want to go drink with us or smoke with us? I forget what he said. And I said, ah, neha vala brate. I got to go to sleep, you know. And they were like, oh my God, are you kidding me? Two people, 4.30 in the morning, Belgrade, two million people. And they recognized my ugly freaking face, man. Whoa. Wild man, kako se kaže wild in Serbski? Ne znam. Oh, yes, I do know. Divinja, divinja, something like that. I think so. Divinja, maybe. I'm getting better with my Serbian man. Let me say the days of the week again here, real quick, before I show you this apartment. I I, I get off on so many different subjects. Sunday, nedelja. Monday, ponedjelak. Tuesday, utorak. Wednesday, sreda. Thursday, Chetvrtak, Friday, Petak, Saturday, Subota. Wow, Charles, I'm getting better, man. You guys give me so much crap, and, and, and I really deserve it, I guess, you know, because I'm such a jerk, you know. And I, I, I should learn this language. I love this country, but I, I don't show you the respect that I should by learning your language. And I'm very, very embarrassed and, and disappointed in that. I want to take some classes, but I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why I'm, I'm nervous because I'm extremely fearful of failure. And I would, you know how depressed and, and crappy I would feel if I took the time to go to some of these classes and I did not do well. And, and I'm, it, w it would be okay if there would be like five or six people in a class, but I'm sure trying to learn Serbian in Serbia, there's gonna be one person. So the teacher's always gonna think, Jesus Christ, is this guy just stupid? You know, I'm gonna give a really bad example of Americans. So I don't, I don't really wanna do it, you know. Oh. I just need to find a, a good-looking young girl and, and marry her and live with her. That's what everybody says. That's the best way to, to learn Serbian is to find a woman and marry her. Anyway, Jesus Christ, I talk too much. I'm still here in Belgrade. I was going to be here for two days, and, and this is my, my 13th or 14th day here. I'm staying in the same house with my best friend, my, my new best friend. I, I can't say my best friend. Mohammed in, in Libya is my best friend in the whole world. I love that man with... with everything that I have in me. My, my other buddy, Muhammad in uh, Saudi Arabia, helped me the other day. He's also a really, really close friend of mine. And Momchilo. So the three M's are like by far the, the best people in my entire life. And I'm from a really small town. So it's really funny to grow up and know your best friends are named Muhammad and Momchilo, for God's sakes. Two of the strangest names I've ever heard. At that time, I'd never heard of Muhammad. The only time I heard Muhammad is when they say, Allah Akbar, Allah Akbar. Blah, 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 you know. And no disrespect to, to Islam, but that's what I, I have pictured when I heard Muhammad because it's all propaganda in the USA. And Momchilo, oh God, I, I still don't even understand the name. It's funny. Uh, I think of my mother when I think of Momchilo. But him and his brother Miroslav, they, they let me stay in their apartment. This is a 200 euro apartment. Beautiful apartment. About 30 minute walk from downtown Belgrade, all for 200 euros. I'm going to show you around if I ever shut up and show you what you can get for 200 euros here in Belgrade, Serbia. But, but most of these guys, they give me a key to their apartment. They leave money, they leave laptops, expensive cameras, everything here. I'm using his camera now. The guy doesn't care. I try to apologize because every single day I stay here one more day, I was like, man, I'm so sorry. I gotta stay here one more day, man. He's like, shut up, be quiet. Don't, why do you always say that? You know, and he, he speaks English good, but I'm just making fun of his accent. But I, I feel so guilty because I'm here. They let me sleep right here. They're not, they don't even show up. Oh my God, I hate that thing. Every time the, like the, a text comes, the speakers go crazy. But anyway, they let me stay here. They, they don't ask me anything. He's, he's got a refrigerator full of food. He said last night, go make some spaghetti for yourself or something when he left, you know. Wonderful, freaking friends, man. You know, and, and you won't find best friends like, like you'll find with a Serbian guy, you know. Amazing, 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 amazing people, you know. And they're nice, this nice to me, to, to an American who, you know, 
I don't know why, and I, I'm a dumbass, and I, I don't know why everybody's so nice to me, you know. I love myself still. You like my haircut? I got a 500 dinar haircut. The guy down the street, it was a guy, I walked by, and he was asleep, and I walked in there because I had to get a haircut. I get my haircut once a week. And I, he was asleep, and I saw him in there, I opened it, there was nobody in there. I said, uh, it's Vinita Yakum Alopricium Srpski. Molim cut. And he said, okay, I speak English. Real nice guy, but he charged me, it was 500 dinar. I usually pay 120, but that's probably why it looks like shit. Uh, he told me, he said, who cut your hair? He said, it's really bad. So he cut it, did a really good job with the fade, beautiful, you know. Anyway, so I look sexier than normal, you know. Mm. Uh, anyway, let me show you this place and let me drink my coffee so I can wake up. Here's what you can get for 200 euros in Belgrade. Oh my God, I've talked forever. I just looked at the time on this flipping thing. Here's the living room of this house. And this is a bed. Most Serbians have beds like this. It's like a couch, but it pulls out. So like a day bed. Almost everybody has that. And almost nobody has a regular bed. Anyway, out of the hundreds of Serbian homes I've been in, almost nobody does. So you Serbs can tell me, yes, we do have that. But I've been probably into more Serbian homes than you have, my friends. Isn't that sad? You know, I, I know more Serbians. It was funny, a guy sent me a message. This is a bedroom here. Uh, Miroslav, I'm sorry I'm showing you a room. It's kind of dirty, but this is a massive bedroom. Everything's furnished in here. Uh, but anyway, a guy sent me a message the other day, and he, he, was, uh, he, said, he said, Charles, you know more Serbians than I do. He said, you've been more, to more places in Serbia than I have. He said, you fight for Serbia more than I do. He said, you argue with haters of Serbia more than I do. He said, regardless of what anybody says, you are, regardless if you like it or not, you are a Serb. So that was really touching, man. Check out the most, the ugliest refrigerator on the planet right there. These guys were here for a month and a half and they had no refrigerator. So the guy had this one laying down there. Oh my God, it's ugly. And this is another funny thing about Serbia. See how small this is. It goes up to my leg, the top of my leg. Most Serbians do not have a really huge refrigerator. Unless you're Dan Minojlovic, whose mother has a massive refrigerator, just like my mother. But most homes do not. And most homes I go into that I've been in have a small one. Because I think the reason, and it's no disrespect to Serbia, but I think it's different culture. They don't believe in storing lots of things in there. Uh, many people I know will go to the market every day and purchase fruits and vegetables or whatever they're going to cook with. Another thing is this tiny, tiny little stove. Uh, it's a miniature stove. It's amazing. You know, Serbians make so much food, but they've got the world's smallest kitchen. Look at this, you know. I, I understand this is a little apartment, but still, they make a lot of food, and, and, and their food, they're... they're Things are really small. This is how Serbians make coffee in this little thing. And I've gotten better at it. You know, you take uh, like three or four spoonfuls. My friend, oh my God, Miroslav, he made some of this the other day. And he puts like four of these massive heaping spoons in this thing. And, uh, you know, makes really strong coffee. But um, what was I going to say? Yeah, four of those spoonfuls. This is a really cheap coffee. But it's really good. It's called Domacho Kafra, which is homemade coffee. Anyway, there's no drawers, just two little cabinets there, nowhere to put silverware. I, the home invader Charles Cather, did all the dishes here, of course, and I did the laundry. See, I'm, I'm good to have it around. I actually mopped the floor the other day, too. Anyway, shut up, Charles. Here's another funny thing about Serbia, is this. Can you see this? This is the bathroom light on the outside of the bathroom. This is a heater, and this is a water heater. And this is what's really shitty about Serbia. When you do this, if this is not on, you're going to have hot or cold water. So it's really crappy. I hate that. Here's the bathroom. They got funny stools. See that little... Ours does not have that. Ours is connected, but they just have that little thing. And you've got one massive button. Uh, everything else, same stand-up shower. There's the tiniest washing machine I've ever seen. It holds actually quite a bit, but the, it takes like two hours to actually do a load of laundry. It sucks. So don't ever get in a hurry to do laundry in Serbia. Everything here is slow. You know, you, you have to wash it for two hours in there, and then you have to bring it out here and let it freaking dry for like months. You know, so check this out. This is, it's funny, it's kind of dirty, but I just hung some laundry. This is the world's longest balcony, and this is 200 euros. For God's sakes, look how long this thing is. It is huge, massive, nice in the summer. Here's a view of Zvezdara. 
There's all the apartments. Some of our friends live over there. It's kind of a rainy, cruddy day here in Belgrade. It's about, I would say, it's probably about 10 Celsius. And I still don't have a jacket. I don't have anything. There's a really nice little 24-hour convenience store. They're supposed to stop selling beer at 10, but they don't. They'll sell it to me. And there's a nice little shop and a good plea escobito over there. So this is what you can get, man. Beautiful place. We're on the sixth floor of this place. The only thing that sucks is there's no elevator. And do you hear that? That's something me and so many Americans complained about. Here in Serbia, people honk for no freaking reason. They love to honk their horns. And it's so annoying. Anyway, my friends, I appreciate you. I love you, Serbians. And if any of you, seriously, if any of you are listening that's interested in lacrosse, uh, starting a lacrosse club in your town, let me know. We can bring some guys down there. We can get you started. We can speak to the city. And I would love to come and speak to the students about lacrosse. Some cities only have a few sports. Pirat, I would love to see something happen in Pirat because I love that town. Anyway, my friends, that's it. Later. Oh my God, where's this?